take some questions. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Sir, uh, your lecture is very interesting, and I want to ask uh, a little you, query. Thank you. Thank you. That is uh, uh, environmental in conditions and the problems also uh -huh. are changing from according to space and the time. Okay. So, and uh, same time, the technology is also changing. So, uh, how to uh, decide that uh, what should be the ethics of, uh, or I what value should be followed? Environmental condition is changing. Uh, now, the, if you look at carefully your question, um, there is an answer in it. The answer is this, we already encounter an environment which has not a good one, is it not? There, is, there are a lot of loss that we um, experience, there are a lot of degradation which has happened. Uh, and that has affected our quality life. This is, this is a kind of a truth which can uh, not be denied or cannot be ignored. Now, the, the point is that whether such a change can be addressed theoretically and what would be a discipline's approach to, uh, to study that change. Now, so far as environmental ethics is concerned, we need to shift, uh, we need to change our language that is in the, in the classical period, in the traditionally right from Aristotle to the modern period, if you look at, I, I was giving an example uh, referring to Kant uh, during enlightenment, till Kant there was this idea that man was uh, you know, the center of the universe, everything that are existing around man is uh, to full, um, for the um, um, for fulfilling the desire of man, fulfilling the needs uh, of the man. So, therefore, our approach was different. We try to see uh, nature or we try to see the environment having some kind of a utility for, for ourselves. But now, the kind of theory which I am trying to propose or some philosophers have been proposing uh, is that we cannot speak in the language of, uh, of modernity, we need to change our language. The language is from a life centric, from human centric world view to a life centric world view. Unless we put everybody in one uh, know, platform, one space and try to connect them, uh, we will not be able to realize uh, what we are uh, conceptualizing today. So, 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 therefore, our dream can be only realized if and only if we propose a life centric ethics, not a human centric ethics. And life centric ethics speaks a different language altogether than the human centric ethics. I hope it is clear. Sir, uh, as we know that uh, we are lots of uh, regulations and uh, policies for the control of pollution and uh, conservation of uh, various resources. So, uh, is there any policy for the promotion of uh, environmental ethics uh, uh, as far as sustainable development is concerned in India? Policy for environmental ethics, see all policies which are doing, uh, which are uh, there to protect environment for, from further degradation is part of environmental ethics, because here the policies are uh, suggesting what ought to be done and what uh, ought not to be done, what ought to be you know, the case and that is what the part of environmental studies. If we are polluting our rivers, then we need to treat uh, the water which is getting into uh, the river. So, that ought to be done. If somebody, uh, the industry is not following that norm, that is a something wrong which is happening and we need to raise voice against it and we consider that is something wrong. So, so that is one example. So, when we, may, we make a policy, we raise a standard and that standard itself is an example of environmental ethics. Sir, thank you very much. Your presentation was very good. We all here appreciated it a lot. I have just one last question. 
Okay. Like ethics, you talked about universal ethics. Can you throw some light? Like ethics should be applicable to human beings. Human beings are controlling the ethics. In fact, they're controlling the whole ecosystem. Yeah. But uh, interference like global warming. Global warming is uh, human beings are only responsible for global warming and no other uh, spatial uh, uh, changes taking place uh, automatically are responsible for the human, uh, for the changing in ethics. No, see, why I was talking about a universal ethics, in, in a very general uh, sense, because uh, in my earlier discussion with some other participant, if you uh, recollect that we are no more a citizen of this country alone, we are global citizens. Global warming, if is an, if is an environmental uh, effect, is experienced not only the citizens of India, but also the citizen who is, uh, who belongs to Norway or some other part of the world. So, uh, the question is that every individual, whether he, he belongs to this world or the other world, okay, whether he belongs to east or west or north or south, this is going to affect everybody. So, it is a universal concern. So, therefore, we need to redesign our, our planning in such a way that we restrict the global warming or we try to protect our endangered species which are getting extinct day by day. And so, so there is a harmony which a universal ethics speaks about. And such harmony if it is not advocated, then it is a threat to the entire humanity. See, uh, we, we speak about terrorism as a social problem. If, if you have looked at my uh, quotation from Peterson in the beginning of the first uh, uh, half of the lecture, I was talking about the, the social problem as well as environmental problems are to be, are to be treated, uh, you know, are, are connected. Now, if terrorism is a problem, uh, is a global issue, so also the environmental crisis that we face in the form of climate change, global warming, pollution. Um, soil erosion, I mean all these things are, are global issues. So, uh, in, in that sense we need to develop an ethics which will help the entire humanity. Yes sir, Hello. please, carry on. Uh, why, why human beings think they are the supreme in nature? That is my question. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, conception that, that we are superior or human beings thinks that they are superior is been historically told by all religions uh, that they are superior. They are made in the image of God. No? So, this, this is a wrong conception which we carry. Um, I, it, is, it is there in the, in the, in the book of Genesis. I know that one can refer to uh, that where uh, man uh, is at the center and everything uh, is uh, at the periphery of the man and everything is there to fulfill um, man's needs. And it is also there in Aristotle uh, who, div who creates a, some kind of a hierarchy in the structure based on the principle of rationality, uh, who says that human beings are more rational, therefore they are higher than other beings. So, he, he makes a kind of a hierarchical structure of beings. So, uh, that is what is that has harmed us, our ethical thinking. So, we must change our view, I think. We need to change, that, that is why this shift from a human centric world view to a life centric world view is necessary. So, this whole concept of ecological self. If human race did not exist in the universe, that would have been better for the nature, I think. There would not have been so much of destruction to the nature. No, this attitude has caused lot of destruction. This, this attitude which we have carried for centuries, you know, with us and thinking that everything uh, is there to fulfill our needs, okay. And humans are something very superior to other beings, other biotic beings is something wrong, something wrong and that has to be changed. In a, when we talk about a life centric world view, 
we try to see that all biotic beings including humans are moral subjects. But humans over and above, humans have a responsibility, humans can care for others and that is where they are all moral agents. They are not only moral subjects, they are also moral agents. Whereas, animals and other biotic beings are moral subjects, because they cannot act as we act. They cannot take decisions as, as we are taking decisions in our uh, human form of life. So, uh, therefore, human have a very higher sense of responsibility towards uh, nature and towards environment. So, when human being will think that they are nothing compared to the nature, hmm. that time I think nature can be saved. Yes, that is, of course, you know, when human beings, that is what I am, I was pointing out in the, the whole lecture was to speak against the human centered ethics. The, the whole lecture was to talk about a new form of ethics in a new language called a life centric ethics. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As a environmental ethics issue, uh, you know the Devrai concept. Which one? Which concept? Devrai, Devrai, one of the forest reserve uh, for the goddess purpose. I see. Okay. No, I am not aware of it. But would you please enlighten me? So, uh, this Devrai concept as an ethical point of view, huh. now it was one. Huh. Second thing is uh, corruption in obeying the laws. Yes. So, uh, why the discussion of ethics? Government strictly not implemented all the rules. Yes. IUCN red data book. So, why the discussion only? Yes. No, the, uh, Second thing is okay. environmental syllabus hmm. from LKG up to the PG level. Huh. It is only theoretical, not practical related. Yes, unfortunately, it is very unfortunate that it has not been very, very practical. Uh, issue of global warming. No global warming, it is a global warning. Yes, 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 yes. So, it is uh, my suggestion, huh. No, not only discussing the ethical point of view, huh. implementation is very necessary, sir. Yes. No, I, I, I fully agree with you that, see, unfortunately, what has happened uh, in last centuries is this, that we have created some kind of a distance from uh, nature. Um, say for example, if you ask, uh, uh, now if I ask my child, now I will tell you my personal experience. Uh, we had recently visited our native place and now um, the cows, the milking was happening and this uh, young child of mine uh, did not like to drink that milk, because he said it is directly coming from the cow, I will not drink that. No? Uh, if you ask who is giving milk, he will say that Dudwala who drops the packet no? uh, every morning. So, she will like to drink that milk rather than you know, having milk from uh, the what we directly get from in the native place. So, you have, we, have, we have started living in a society where we have dissociated ourselves extremely from nature. Now, look at Tagore, eh? you, have you heard of Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore? So, uh, the concept global, as uh, Gandhiji told that, um, yes. uh, go to the Gandhi, rural side, 1932. Yes. Both Gandhi and Tagore have a very finest uh, conception of uh, human nature engagement. It is not only Gandhi alone, but Tagore also has uh, you know, said that how we need to live along with nature. So, uh, since the, the modern uh, individual have created a, some kind of a distance, 
that is harming you know, uh, us indirectly. And about corruption, um, I think corruption will stop if everybody, everybody takes an initiative in re-examining oneself at its own level, wherever he has been stationed. So, that, that is my understanding. Sir, is there uh, any difference between environmental ethics and ethical environment? Ethical environment. Now, environmental ethics needs an ethical environment. E, there is an appeal to create an ethical environment. So, an ethical environment will be created if and only if we cultivate a sense of uh, no, um, uh, ethical attitude within ourselves. Then that environment will be created. Yes, sir. Another one question is there, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Please. Is there any certification uh, is there in existence regarding uh, environmental ethics like that uh, quality management or environmental quality? There are more uh, certifications are there, ISO. Like uh, that for environmental ethics, any uh, certifications are there? Um, I am not sure about environmental ethics. That uh, I am not sure about it. All of us know that the basic ethics of the environment, but okay. uh, in day to day life, we do not have time to uh, take care of the environment and their ethics. Okay. Is there any uh, effective implement methods to implement these ethics into the society? Okay. Now, uh, see, we do not have time is not an excuse. We have to have time to initiate it somewhere. Otherwise, no, uh, we have to experience this in much a uh, no, uh, bigger way, the kind of environmental disasters that we are, we have been experiencing in our uh, no, uh, day to day life, that will come in much bigger way, if we do not initiate it right from our own personal end. So, um, I think we need to keep this awareness and act accordingly, so that we stop uh, the further deterioration that is happening to environment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Why can't you make this subject environmental science as a regularized subject in a practice like voice mathematics, huh. botany, etc. And the second question is why not it become a mandatory that only the teachers expertise in environmental science shall be allowed to teach environmental subject instead of the teachers of geology, chemistry and other. Sir, it is a difficult question sir. I am sure. Uh, our uh, um, instructor in charge, Professor Seti will address to this question, why not environmental uh, studies um, is, a, is, a, is a central uh, theme of our engineering uh, studies. Uh, that Professor Seti will definitely uh, know, respond to, but uh, the other question I do not know, uh, who will teach what, if I uh, I specialize in philosophy, I can only talk about environmental ethics. If somebody specializes in economics, will speak about uh, uh, economics much better than uh, I do. I, but I, we, everybody becomes an economics agent, agent when we go to market, purchase things, but thereby we do not become an expert in economics, uh, is not it. So, therefore, every subject has an expert and every uh, discipline uh, uh, flourishes with that and our experts research and ideas. So, that is my response to you. Good evening sir. Good evening. Sir, how can we justify our activities to our mother earth and what are all the activities we can change to achieve the goodness of our environment? See, as I told you, we have been creating obstruction uh, in our life. The whole principle of life is life has to flourish. Okay. Not only the human life has to flourish at the cost of environment, other biotic beings, other living beings, but all life has to flourish and that, that is the first basic principle. Okay. Humanity will only sustain if all other beings are given uh, respect, if nature is been respected. If nature is harmed, then obviously, I, will, I am indirectly harming myself or we are indirectly harming ourselves. 
is not. So, when we give up this self selfish attitude and adopt a selfless attitude, then we will be able to flourish much better, protect our environment in a much better way and that will create a sense of respect not only for the humanity, but also for all other beings that you know that needs our attention and we needs uh, their existence. Sir, one more question sir. Okay. sir. How can we create awareness among the students in the field of environmental ethics sir? Yes, it is, it is easy, it is easy because we need to communicate to them and there are various means of communication. I was giving an example of uh, uh, no, silent valley movement. If you, if you go back to the silent valley movement, you find that poets, poets have played role, academicians have played role, the, the politicians, the local politicians have played role in the form of various activities. So, for example, Sundarlal Bhuguna, Padayatra, which he, uh, no, uh, he was uh, uh, influenced by Gandhi's, Gandhi's Padayatra. And so, there are various ways uh, to communicate to people in the form of plays, in the form of poetry, in the form of dramas, you know, uh, in the form of uh, mass Padayatra or movement. Uh, so, awareness uh, program can be done in many ways. The purpose is to communicate, the purpose is to bridge the gap between um, people and nature. But the kind of lifestyle that we have adopted is creating a hindrance in the path of uh, no, such communication, such a dialogue. So, uh, a real dialogue will happen if we take ourselves to nature and we clo start closely associating ourselves with nature. That will be a real form of communication. Thank you, sir. Thank well, you so much. Sir, here I have been teaching the environment ethics for the I past uh, five years okay, okay. for uh, nice graduate okay. students. Okay. However, I am not happy because it is supposed to be inculcated at the uh, school level, sir. Yes, yes. I what agree. do you feel about this, sir? I agree. Sir, I certainly more? agree with you that such a uh, initiative should be taken at the, at the grassroots level when a child is been educated. Uh, right from the primary school to show that how a tree is important, how other pets are important or other animals are important, how closely they are linked to human life. That has to be shown um, at a very basic level of our education, because it is, it is easy to transform their attitude when it is taught at the basic level, but it is difficult to transform our attitude when it is taught, uh, taught when they are adult. But what is meaningful here is that at least we can create a sense of awareness among ourselves that which was absent few years back. One need not be disappointed uh, that nothing is happening, but I am sure go on repeating with right attitude one day or other we will you know uh, see its positive effect. Thank you, sir. One more question from our uh, participants, sir, please, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, if there is a natural uh, resources like a river, for example, okay. what are the ethics we need to follow from upstream side and downstream side, which, uh, which is constructed a dam on that river? We use that kind of, uh, the resources of that river. Yes, yes. Now, certainly the rivers, uh, see, we need energy and that is why dams are being created. Now, when dams are being created, it is affecting the life of the beings who are earlier dependent on it, is not it. So, so that is inevitable, but and that is what, that is where the sustainable idea of sustainable development comes in, because when it fulfills the need of the humanity, okay and that is the basic need and for that reason a dam has been created. I think uh, without harming much, 
such things is uh, no, uh, can be seen in the light of uh, having uh, value. But uh, otherwise, so we cannot destroy all dams and say that uh, no, let us go back to uh, the real nature. Uh, that cannot be done. That revision cannot be done. What we can uh, can be done is that a desirable reform, a desirable reform that can be done. We cannot go back to the history and see that we have to undo the entire things, but what can be done possibly that what is desirable today. Sir, one more question from our principal sir please. Okay. Sir, good evening. Good evening sir. Values change with the settings, environmental settings, either moral values or ethical values or intrinsic values. Okay. Then how to account for? Intrinsic values do not change. A value which is necessarily value in itself will not change. How it will change? Only the external values will change. Value in itself will not change. Okay. Whatever it is, it changes with settings. No, the situation. Either time settings or place see, settings. No, look at look at this um, example. The question like the child uh, slaves slavery. Okay, slavery was I I was giving an example of slavery which was prevailing you know uh, in Athens. Uh, then when Plato himself was talking about. Uh, the right of the citizen and uh, a noble state, uh, etcetera, etcetera. Now, now the situation has changed, is it not? And we we condemn slavery, is it not? So we condemn slavery in this sense that we see that every human being is valuable, and there is an intrinsic value in their life. So, similarly, when we talk about child labor today and that has to be banned uh, precisely in, in this light of thinking that every individual uh, has a life and we should allow or help that life to flourish. So, unless we create that situation, we will not be helping the humanity, rather we are really creating a damage to our own uh, form of life. So, even if the situation are different, the values do not change, particularly the intrinsic values. Okay, okay. Was the approach to the nuclear power plant project in Konkan, Jaitapur, uh -huh. in environmental ethical problem? And if so, give one, if just one reason. Yes. Now, see, the, the question is you want more energy, you want a good lifestyle. Now, uh, when we find that there is a necessity, we try to fulfill the necessity. We try to create alternative energy. Nuclear energy is one of the energy. Okay? Now, to have nuclear energy and to uh, create a nuclear plant is possible, but it is also required and that is also a, another necessity is that we should create responsible citizen who will take care of the industry, who will take care of the, uh, the plant, the nuclear plant. Now, if our citizens are not responsible, if the engineers working there are not responsible, they do not feel that it is their duty to work and work hard, see that it does not create any harm to uh, others. Then our whole entire exercise will be futile exercise. So, all the needs will be fulfilled if and only if we take a holistic account of what is our need, what is our responsibility, what kind of duty and responsibility it demands from us. So, everything has to be taken you know, uh, into account seriously, then only we can think of a a good society. Look at France. Eh? Look at France, and France was the country which had produced nuclear uh, most uh, nu ha have most nuclear plants, and how responsible their citizens are, is not it? So um, look at uh, Japan. How uh, no 
um, technically they have controlled Fukushima, you know, what, what happened to Fukushima. So, um, we have to be a res responsible citizen, eh? an enlightened citizen. Then only we can think of a better world, better society, a more developed society. All we can have more than 100 smart cities, is not it? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome. Why would environmental ethics uh, work why? against pollution control? Of course, it has to be pollution. Why would environmental ethics against no. pollution control? Okay. Now, 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 please listen. Environmental ethics is not against pollution control. Pollution control is an institution which advocates certain uh, standards to regulate pollution that is damaging the environment. So, how can an institution be without norms? So, pollution control has certain norms to regulate whatever damage that has already been caused and how to restrict those damages. So, it is certainly that such an institution will maintain uh, its regulation, its norms, so that the environment is, is protected. Of environmental ethics related to theoretical as well as practical? No, environmental ethics is related to theoretical and practical life of all of us. Now, practically, suppose I plant a tree today, I participate in Vanamohotsav. Now, uh, if I do that, it is not necessary that I will personally gain. Okay. Suppose I plant a tree at the, I got this awareness, plant a tree at the age of 60. Now, I am not certainly directly benefited from it. I will only have a satisfaction that I have planted a tree. Okay. I have done something good for the environment. Now, my future generation will earn that benefit, is not it? So, similarly, it has a practical, it has a theoretical benefit as well. The theoretical benefit is that the kind of satisfaction one earns for oneself, the kind of you know well-being one develops okay, about other, that is a satisfaction, that is a theoretical question. What kind of person I am? Okay, if I am a factory owner, if I am owning an industry and I employ 100 child labor, Okay, uh, to uh, reduce my cost of production, then certainly my sense of well-being is lower than a person who is a rickshaw wala, who is you know, uh, earning uh, uh, in, in a broad daylight under the uh, 47 uh, degree temperature, is it not? So, his well-being is much higher than my sense of well-being or my sense of self. So, that is the theoretical uh, contribution that how I st uh, start respecting my own well being, respecting my own self compared to the others. That is the theoretical contribution which an ethical engagement provides. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Good evening. We are from Pariyar Maniyamai. Uh, our heartiest greetings to you that you are devoting so much of your time for just generating such an interest among our people. I, I am also happy to, to see all of you there sitting presently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am very <laughs> glad. Really, yes, yes. Today's session is going on very wonderfully and um, some of the interesting features were there in your presentation. Thank you, thank you. That about the God, God, the God has created the world or other things like that. Yes, and yes. We differ from that. Yes. We know that is a man created because we believe on uh, scientific yeah. principles, scientific yes. evidences. Yes. So that's why that almost God created by man huh. in order to that exploit the people, the have not. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So actually, this is what the system we still we are now uh, witnessing. Huh. Uh, there are some of the comments, some questions I have got to post before you. Please carry uh, on. One it is the ethics, the ethics built up with the foundation of mutual respect, yes. equality. 
free yes. from exploitation yes humanity yes harmony etc yes. but at this era of globalization ha huh. these things are at the stake it is uh, is it possible to reverse the globalization yes to ensure environmental and human ethics okay uh, one of our question this one sir and mm. uh, uh, one more component the recent the morning you have been discussing about uh, that, uh, that one more yeah, interesting features you presented just a few minutes back that is on karl marx marxism the yes. defecation nature uh, defecation that was very nice it was actually when karl marx he wrote that uh, das kapital yes when he analyzed the system how the human evolution took place and how that people the utility concept everything came yes, then yes. he uh, suddenly he whatever the his assertion become more true now because now people we can say even the uh, in the develop, how the people rich exploits poor and yes. rich nations exploit the developing nation yes, yes. so the ethics it is totally it is being violated based on the material benefit yes so i think that, is, that also we would like to extend our uh, gratefulness to you for your conveying uh, good news and thank only you, please you. kindly give the, uh, your uh, response to this one sir thank you very much sir yes now uh, see my response to your first question about globalization and how we cannot undo such a uh, such a big uh, no uh, project global project for that is though it is primarily an economic project but there are certain underpinnings moral underpinnings which we need to look after which people have ignored the developed country have ignored like the care for the care aspect okay the care aspect has been ignored okay so the underdeveloped countries are not are only taken into uh, no consideration from a economic point of view and they have ignored the ethical aspect of their engagement and that has to be reasserted now look at uh, no uh, india as a developing nation we as a nation have tried have tried very recently in reasserting ourselves is not in, in in many many forums and many occasions so such a assertion is necessary so that we advocate that what is our need and what is the need of such nations who are the victim of globalization so that is i think one priority which will reduce the hierarchy okay not only the economic hierarchy but also the moral hierarchy which is existing uh, in our society uh, or in the world then uh, the, the second question is about uh, about developing a a kind of a theoretical framework in which we treat uh, everybody as a equal uh, one i think that is an attempt to, uh, has to be initiated from from an individual level each and every individual level i think that initiation is necessary we cannot say that no no it is not my job uh, no uh, it is somebody else's job it is not somebody else's job it is a job of all of us and that has to be initiated from uh, each one of us by each one of us as well uh, uh, thank you very much and then we would like to hear something about the creation of god oh uh, yes is, uh, no no look at yes, look at, there are, there are two uh, concept of creation of god i gave uh, if you Uh, you might you might recollect this too said i talked about sarvam khalidam brahman that brahman is everywhere this is one concept of god god has been god has been manifested in many ways in many forms and is existing in many forms and there is another concept which god has been created uh, man and has given some kind of a power to enjoy the other properties okay so the other existing entities are conceptualized as the property of man then so when we have a sense of property then that hierarchy you know gets into the structure of our evaluation that i treat myself as higher or the owner of something okay that is wrong that in, in fact diminishes the earlier concept of uh, god creation okay that's the difference okay uh, sir my question is that as per the ethics in an indian culture huh. mythology uh, itself have a lots of 
yes in various religions so what is your opinion about the indian ethics should we follow or uh, not no no i am it's a very social and common question yes, yes, i am not here to suggest what to follow and what not to follow i am here to only make a, a kind of a, a analysis before you that how we can have a disciplinary approach to understand environment that is my uh, first uh, uh, thing uh, point uh, i think need to be uh, delved in little seriously the other point is that uh, yes uh, it, there are mythologies which help us you know uh, in understanding uh, environment much better so i i am i am not sure that what kind of mythology you have taken into account but there are ample examples which we try to draw uh, when we uh, teach environmental ethics to children to clarify certain doubts yes thank you sir welcome welcome okay thank you everyone for uh, patiently listening to lectures and patiently um, uh, asking questions uh, it was uh, uh, indeed a very uh, great uh, opportunity for me to I uh, talk to all of you uh, thank you